Welcome back, boys. Here is your commentators, Reload and Brent Thomas Thomas, here in Eventy uh, Cup. Uh, today we've got uh, Shadow Cartel or Cado Chartel, also known as Snuff Factor, versus RVB or French RVB. Uh, Cado Chartel have brought a Raven, a Pharax, Osprey, Thrasher, Merlin, so a Shield Brawly, uh, uh, Brawly setup. They've actually warped in at range though, so that is pretty interesting. Probably kind of scared of that Hyperion. What have uh, RVB brought then, Brent? Well, you mentioned RVB has brought. Cado Chartel has brought Hyperion Prophecy, Exeg, Aldos, Rifter. Whereas the Hyperions come at zero with the Rifter coming in at maybe 20. And you've got the Algos Prophecy coming in further. And then sitting all the way back at 50, you have the Exec just trying to stay away. Oh yeah, and the match has just started and it looks like Cado Chartel are actually... They're actually burning their Hyperion in. And they're actually moving, uh, moving, actually positioning their forces actually behind the Hyperion, like uh, uh, using using it as a big meat shield in a yes. way. If it kites backwards with those torps, its short range is going to get deceptively long, larger. Oh yeah, um, it does look like he is taking the full uh, brunt of the damage. Actually, no, not much damage is actually being. Uh, being on either side but it does look like uh, raven's actually taking quite a lot of damage but um that hyperion is now tackled and the raven is kiting away now but the ferret is also tackled on the rvb side you've got to watch that the hyperion also has newts on it and it's not going to be a large newt due to the fact that it's the uh the thrasher that's tackled it but you've got to be aware that the hyperion is going to have those very very large hybrid weapons that just drain so much cap but it looks like this raven's taking the full force of the damage as well as this hyperion the hyperion's just dropping into low shields while the raven's halfway through mm, yeah it looks like the, the, her, the raven is losing the dps for even though he is not even tackled i think this hyperion is probably lo loaded null and trying to get as many pot shots as possible on that raven but he is counting away now just fine he is getting it back shield but this thrash it wow he just he just got nuked oh he's actually he's actually got some uh, shield but he he is actually going to die very soon he did yolo tackle that hyperion to stop it from uh catching the raven and he is down yeah the thrasher getting a little bit too close there you've got to respect the hyperion has both a web and a status grappler so if you get within 100 meters of that you're dead you're dead in the water oh yeah absolutely and uh Looks like the uh, the uh, the Merlin also tried to go in for the Hyperion tackle, trying to hold the Hyperion. It's such a scary ship, but it looks like the Hyperion is now free. He is grappled, but obviously a grapple at 20 kilometers is actually pretty weak. And uh, looks like they're actually switching damage to the Prophecy, knowing that those links and uh, those links and those rapid lights are kind you, of important. They you need have to, to watch out for this Hyperion. This Hyperion is taking top damage from a raven that's oh, up yeah. to a thousand dps the it looks hyperion like this, may be this, tanky. This, this, yeah this hyperion is getting kited by the raven right now he is the raven is kiting the hyperion uh but he is so, tanking for now anyway they've done it they've done quite a smart thing here of splitting damage they know this raven can beat that hyperion's self-rep so what it's doing is they've just sat the raven on the hype and says go go boy go kill that so the exec is just having to to choose between which ship it wants to save does it want to save the prophecy with the links or does it want to save the hyperion because unlike the uh unlike the ogre it only has three reps it can't split them evenly between the two it has to choose one and let the other die yeah and uh it looks like there's too many battles going on right now the high there's the hyperion and raven brawling it out while the osprey is sticking close to the raven and there's another battle where the Ferox and the Prophecy are brawling it out. And the Frigates as well. There's three mini battles. The, the Frigates are dog fighting it. And the Ferox and the Prophecy are brawling it out as well. While the you... Raven is very, very uh, way out of position. This, is, same as this is very, very scary for this Raven. Because this Raven isn't like self-rep fit. It's entire buffer fit. Which means that they've finally bent through all of its buffer. And it's going to start dropping soon. If it starts to leak into armor. But the <laughs> the Malin is getting completely annihilated in that frig battle. Like you said. Oh uh, yeah. It's just off the field. Yeah, uh, yeah Merlin down. It was, it was a, a Rifter and an Algos versus a Merlin. Even though the Merlin did have reps, it wasn't enough and is it did go down. But the prophecy, uh, but the the second battle where the Ferox versus the uh, Ferox versus Prophecy, it does looks like the prop uh, the Ferox is winning that battle at this very moment. 
the Raven is also losing it, his battle as well. It's just bleeding into armor. Now, one of the things not a lot of people realize is when this Osprey is running all five of its reps going as fast as it can due to the fact that it is fit with a ancillary shield booster, its cap booster isn't large enough. It can't boost to continually rep, so it's only stable with two out of the five reps it has. So as the fight's going on and on, it's reached the five-minute mark. It's going to be repping at maybe 40% of the power that it usually does. Oh, yeah, as you can see that this Raven's just dropping now because of it. Yep, and uh, basically right now it's just a war of attrition right now. The uh, Prophecy is stabilizing, the Hyperion's also in half armor, and this Raven is in structure. He will die soon if he does not get any reps, and he is down. It looks like the, the war of attrition has uh, sided to the Caddo Chartel team, and it looks like their lead will uh, increase very soon if this Hyperion starts moving. Yep, and it does look like... I think we've reached the point of no return. I think that uh, enough damage has gone off that that Hyperion's safe and the Prophecy is not going to uh, go down anytime soon with just the Ferox on it. Yeah, it does look like the, uh, the Prophecy is probably going to stabilise. And the Osprey just got nuked now, so it is just the Ferox right now. Kato Chartel cleaning house, actually going 5-0, to zero, which is quite surprising considering how the positioning warfare was going for... Uh, RBB, but it did look like the the full blaster brawler setup just pushed through and uh... you you have to be impressed with uh, how fine of a line Cado Chartel tread with this. They 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 got into the last bits of their tank before they started taking structure damage and manages to just gamble that bit of EHP to win here. Oh yeah, it looks like. Um... Team Tamer did in fact bring their slaves on this match, that's why none of their armor ships died, of course. Uh, <laughs> but it does look like this Ferox is going down now, he's in armor and he's gonna get cleaned up just fine. And there he goes. It looks like he, he is now. living to win right now, but the Hyperion is in rage and he's gonna apply that massive blaster damage. And looks like this match will go to Team Tamer. I'm this honestly Ferox. surprised this, this, oh, there this we Ferox go. is now taking this long skill. And with that, it's back to the studio.